Well, we are live. Praise the Lord. How you doing today? Are you doing good? Well, hey, I'm Jeremiah Smith, and we are here on Resurrection Day. Praise the Lord. And it's Easter. I hope that you're pumped up and thrilled today, and uh, we're going to enjoy our time together. Got a special service for you today, and I believe it'll bless you and encourage you. You know, I mean, this is the day that our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ was resurrected. Think about that today, you know. It's a powerful, powerful day, you know. All these people that claim that they're God, has any of them been resurrected? No, but Jesus has been resurrected, praise the Lord. So we have a lot to be thrilled about, amen. God is good, and he's good all the time, praise the Lord. You didn't just happen to step in here. You didn't Spirit drew you here today. You know, you think about it. The Bible says, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. That's Jesus talking today, you know, and he's drawing you here today on this wonderful Resurrection Sunday, and he's going to touch your life right there where you're at. Do you believe that today? You know, you don't have to walk away the same. You don't have to keep carrying the same things you used to carry. You, you can be changed here in the blink of an eye by the Holy Spirit and power. Praise the Lord. He's the burden, yoke, destroying power. Praise the Lord. And, you know, it'll take, take the things right off your back right now, the Holy Spirit and his power. Or his anointing will touch you right there where you're at. If you're in the car, if you're sitting on the sofa, if you're driving down the road, his power is touching you right now, and he's freeing you right there by that same resurrection power that Jesus had in himself. Think about that, or he still has in himself. I'm sorry. Yeah, resurrection power, right? And he's working in me, and he's touching you right there today. That resurrection power is touching you, praise the Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful for resurrection power, you know? You know, Jesus can raise the dead. Amen. Maybe your job situation's dead, or maybe your family seems, you know, the situation seems dead, or maybe you've lost a loved one, or, you know, the whole situation seems dead. You know, God can resurrect your purpose and your your things that He's you're needing resurrect in your life. You know, he's a resurrecting God. And he'll touch you right there where you're at. Do you believe that? Do you believe he'll resurrect some stuff for you today? Well, that's what he wants to do. You know, he doesn't want you staying like you are and staying in the situation that you are. No, he wants to touch you right there where you're at. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about resurrection day today, and I'm so th glad that you get to be here. We're not talking about going and hunting eggs. No, and it's not about a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's coming to rule and reign on this earth, praise the Lord. And he's wanting to rule and reign in your life to make your life better, praise the Lord. You know, he said, I came to give you life, and I came to give it to you more abundantly, that resurrection life, an abundant life that he wants for you. Don't settle for just any old life and, you know, going and uh, raking sand, you know, and meditating. No, you can have resurrection in your life and your life, you know, in your spirit and be thrilled about getting up with your day with him and be letting him walk with you and talk with you on a daily basis. Amen. He's a resurrecting God. And that's why we're here. I'm, I'm pumped up. It's resurrection day. You know, maybe if you have someone next to you, you should say, Hey, you need to get pumped up. It's resurrection day today. Praise the Lord. And you know, we want to celebrate Jesus. You know, we all get to do this once a year, so we might as well enjoy this whole service. We may as well just have ourselves a good time, you know, no telling what's going to happen, praise the Lord. You know, the things he's been asking me to do this service is going to be a little unique. We're going to have a good service, and we're just going to enjoy the Father today, praise the Lord. You know, if you're online, uh, you can watch us online at YouTube. Or if you're not online at YouTube, you can you can catch us live on Podbeam. We are live going literally all around the world. The last time I checked, I think we were at 24,000 people coming through the live podcast. And, it, of course, we have lots of followers. And God's been good to us. It's exciting, you know. So you're not the only one that I'm talking to, but the Lord, Holy Spirit's touching you right there where you're at. And he can touch anybody on a individual basis, help you with going through, you know, you, he'll take each situation by the and he'll help you. He's a good, good father. He, he cares about what you've been going through and the hurts that you've had this week and last week. And he cares about the pain that you've been going through. He, he cared about Jesus when he was going to the cross. Think about that today. You know, he cares about you. Amen. Sent his son to die for you. Amen. He couldn't have given anything more precious. He couldn't have gave all the gold in the world for you or all the silver in the world for you. No, he gave the most precious thing he had, and that's Jesus. And his blood paid the price for you. You say, I don't understand that. That's okay. 
Now, you don't have to understand it, but you do know that he gave the best for you. He gave the best he could give for you. He's a good father, and he loves you, and he'll always give the best for you because he's a good father. Amen. And he'll watch, he's been watching over your life. Maybe you're today, you aren't saved and he's been watching, you know, all the things that are going on with you. He cares about the stuff that you're going through. He cares about the challenges that you've had. And now he's time to come into the father's house so he can help you. Praise the Lord. He's watching with tender courts of love. He's watching you even when you're not saved. He said that he gave his son for the whole world. Think about that. Not just for the Christians, he gave his son for everybody so that they could come to know the Father through Jesus Christ. Think about that today. Powerful, powerful stuff. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to get into our, our man, man, you should be something wrong with you. You know, you, you need to be fired up. Maybe you've been a Christian for 48 years and you don't get excited about Resurrection Day. There's something wrong. You know, you get, you get excited just to go to church. No, we're not just going to church. We're coming to celebrate a Savior who's no longer in the grave. Praise the Lord. Amen. He, you know, he, he lifted up, praise the Lord, out of the grave. He knocked the door down, praise the Lord. And he wants to knock down the doors and the circumstances in your life that need to be changed and help you today, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you can catch us live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. You can catch us live here on Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time. Sometimes I'm a little late, like today. It takes a little bit to get on for me, you know, sometimes. But we are right about those times. If you'll just be patient with me, I try to be right about that time. And you can catch us live at those service times, praise the Lord. And so, you know, if you, if you want to, you can listen to the live podcast. Like I said, we're live on Podbeam, or you can watch us live on YouTube if you'd like to catch those live services on those uh, two particular places. But if you can't catch us live, there's no problem. You can listen to the rebroadcast on many, many different avenues. You can catch us on Spotify. You can catch us on Google Music, iTunes, Listen Notes, Podbeam, TuneIn off Alexia, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Deezer. Uh, you can catch us on, uh, dear me, Pandora, Amazon Prime, Verbal, iVox, Audio Junkie, Podchaser, Player FM, Samsung. And, of course, we're on uh, Boom Plays, one of our newest ones, and you can check us out there. And like I said, we're live on video on YouTube, many, many videos on YouTube, and you can check out the videos there on YouTube. We have those things to you free just to feed your spirit and encourage you. I don't care if I get a whole bunch of likes. I don't care if I have a whole bunch of followers. I'm doing it for the Lord, and so it's exciting to be here for you, praise the Lord. It's an honor to get to be with you today, and I, I consider it a privilege and an honor. Hey, you know, there's some people can't do this. They don't, they're not in great health, you know, or they're not feeling feeling good, you know, or, and they're not able to do this, you know, may not know how to do this. And so I consider it a privilege and an honor to get to be with you and to feed the sheep, praise the Lord, and those that aren't saved to come to know Jesus, praise the Lord. The best thing that ever can happen to you is to come to know Jesus. Amen. That's still the best thing that ever happened to you in your whole life is to know Jesus. Amen. You know, maybe you need to go back there when it started and think about how good he's been to you. Praise the Lord. He's been good, hasn't he? <laughs> oh my goodness. He's been good. He's good all the time. He's good when you go to bed. He's good when you get up. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Amen. He's there for you. Praise the Lord. You say, well, Jeremiah, you're just going off, you know, but it's my heart. Amen. I love the father. He's a good, good father, praise the Lord. I'm just sharing with you out of my heart. He's a good, good father. You say, well, you're just doing that to get a bunch of people to listen. No, I, like I said, I'm not doing it for the likes or the follows. I'm doing it because I want to minister to you, praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you right there where you're at today. So this is a free download. You can download it at Popbeam as soon as we get done or listen to one of those other places there if you'd like to. It's all free. Give it to someone. Encourage them today. And be a blessing to someone today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you can listen to us live, listen to the rebroadcast. As soon as this YouTube's over, we're going to let that video go out and post too. So you can watch the video if you'd like to watch it feel free to watch the videos. Praise the Lord. If you'd like to give to them, there's no pressure to give, but if you'd like to give, you can, you know, and uh, we, like I said, all of our resources are free to you, but if you'd like to give, you can go to jeremiasmithministries.pobbeam.com, hit the, the, the uh, pages tab, go to the giving tab, all kinds of stuff there, <laughs> and you can figure out a way to give there if you'd like to. Luke 638 says, give and it shall be given unto you. Isn't that what Jesus did? He gave and it was given to you. That's how his law works, isn't it, right? God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he reap. Jesus went into the earth and produced all of us Christians. Think about that today. They, that was the perfect seed to be sown 
into the earth. Praise the Lord. You know, and if you want to give, you can give, and you can't outgive God. Amen. And whatever you do, you can't outgive Him. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure that ye meet it shall be met to you again. You know, and I'm not pressuring you to give in any way, but you can give if you'd like. I know if I buy a CD or I go, I like Christian music. I like to buy the CD and be a blessing to someone. And that's what kind of got me set on this. I think is more that I just want to give you the opportunity if you'd like to, but there's no pressure. You can never give a dime to this ministry if you didn't want to. That's okay. I'm still going to come and be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm about the father's business. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Praise the Lord. We'll be about the master business to well you can do that if you'd like feel free into that you can do what you'd like to do praise the lord concern of finding we're going to go ahead and get a message i will do a little bit different today is that okay with you it's easter <laughs> we might as well do some things a little different uh normally if you haven't ever listened to this podcast before i just come on here and we right after I did those same announcements I just gave to you, I go literally right into a message is what I do. And I don't have a choir. I don't have a special song. You know, I remember when I was a youth pastor where they would have someone say, Hey, we got someone that's going to do a special today, you know, and we'd get somebody up there, you know, and my goodness, you're excited. Somebody's got a special. And sometimes it was really good. Sometimes it wasn't so special. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, you know, we'd have a special though, you know, some kind of special song, you know, and so I'm going to do things a little different. Uh, used to be I, when I first started the, following the Lord, he had me do a coffee house type ministries. What he had me do. I, we took my dad's sub shop, we converted it. You may have heard me tell this story. And what we did is, uh, I came out and played music. I, I, I'm really, every song I sung about is about getting saved. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was just glad to be with the Lord. Hey, Amen. I don't how about y'all like that? You glad to be with the Lord? Well, you know, I was just thrilled to be with the Lord, you know. And so what I did is I conferred, I believe it was on Friday nights, I conferred that coffee house, you know. And I'm going to try to give you that feel today. I had a friend come in, he'd read poetry. He, now he's passed away. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read out of his book. I'm actually going to give you a poem today. I'm going to give you a little bit of music today. I'm going to give you a special. <laughs> I hope it's special to you, praise the Lord. And it may not sound that great uh, because I'm going to back up from the mic and play a guitar, but I'm going to try my hardest to give you that kind of experience. You say, well, why would you do that? Well, for, for number one, the Lord lead me to do it. That's why I'm doing it. But number two, it reminds me of that passion that you should have when you first get saved, praise the Lord. And I wasn't doing it for money. I wasn't doing it for anything. I was just doing it to follow Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm getting emotional to follow Jesus. Amen. And we need to follow Jesus in every area of our lives. Praise the Lord. What are you thrilled about? What are you excited about? Well, you should be number one excited about your Savior, your Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to try to give you a taste of that today. I'm going to try to let you get in on that type of service and atmosphere that we had. I wish I had Ricky here running the sound with me, but I don't have him with me. But we're going to do do our best. Praise the Lord. I'm a little emotional, but we're going to do our best. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it okay to be emotional about God? He's so good to us. I mean, he's a good father. This is resurrection day and I'm going to give you the best I got. Praise the Lord. So let's get the poem. We're going to get started. Let's pray before we start. And uh, man, I hope I don't get too emotional. I'm going to do my very best. Praise the Lord. So y'all stretch your hands out, believe with me, use some faith. And if I start crying, then I'm going to, I'm going to be saying, well, I'm not sure if y'all were using your faith the way you should. <laughs> Amen. You know, so you want to stretch out and use your faith. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. Father, we thank you, Father, for being so good to us today. Thank you for your resurrection power, going to the cross and your resurrection power. God, coming up out of that tomb, praise the Lord. You've been so good to us, Father. And Father, we just ask, Lord, as we get into this, Father, today, and this service goes whichever way you want to go, Father, we just ask that you help it to be a blessing to whoever's listening, get somebody saved, encourage somebody. We pray in Jesus' name, and we just thank you, Father, for it. Father, flood us with light. Help us to see some things we hadn't seen before. And Father, we just ask you help no one to leave without getting something from you today, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Help that one that's lost the passion that they used to have to get the passion back that they need to have for you, Father. Help them get on track with you today, Father, the way that they need to be getting on track with you. 
And we just ask for it in Jesus' name. We'll give you the praise. And before we go, we minister to you. Thank you for taking care of us, taking care of our families. Thank you for dying on that cross. Thank you for your resurrection today, Father. And we just give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before I do all this, I want to, you realize it's been, let's see, something rare around 26 to 27 years since I've done this. <laughs> so I'm going to do the best I can here. And y'all believe with me, praise the Lord. So we're going to start with the poem here. And what we would do is basically have a gentleman sitting in the sound of, over here beside us. And somebody would do some poetry. We're trying to reach the youth of our area. And we'd have somebody read some poetry. And then we'd have, I'd come up, do a song. And then we'd, I would do a message. And that's what we're going to do today. And I'll just give you what we got, praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and read this poem. This is from E.J. Burt. He used to do my poems with me here, or do his poems with me. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, read from E.J. Burt there, praise the Lord, his poems. He What he did is he encapsulated these within a book. And he's got a couple of books and different things that you can get, praise the Lord. And you can contact, uh, uh, you can look up E.J. Burt there, uh, Penny Burt, and uh, she... Uh, may be able to get you these poems. I'm not sure if they still have them in print, but I'm reading out of his book. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, praise the Lord. And it's called His Love. Let's see here. It says, you cannot live without his love. To do so would be death. His love created all you see and gave Adam his breath. His love shows patience when you fall for us to try again. His love shows mercy, tenderness, despite the way you've been. His love is there with grace on hand to bless us left and right. His love will grant us victory with wisdom, power, and might. His love will claim a troubled heart and clear a troubled mind. His love is always raining down. The purest of its kind. Praise the Lord. His love is so loved, his love so loved the world, so that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not be lost, but one. Powerful, his love. Amen. And if EJ was here, he'd I, if I had him here and I'd have him read it for you, I'd try to do my best with that. His love. Amen. I want to sing a song for you now, and then we're going to do our message. Praise the Lord. This may not be perfect. Like I said, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just doing what the Lord's leading me to do today. Is that okay with you? Let's do that today. I don't know if this is going to make me very popular. <laughs> but I'm going to do my best here. Okay. Let's see if I can hold it here. There is someone like you to meet. He is better than what I could speak. He keeps me higher than any drug. He is hope. He is love. Well, do you understand the love of Jesus for man? Jesus for man. When Jesus lives, even though he died, nailed to a cross and crucified. Well, I know there can never be someone who loves us more than he. Do you? that about 26 years ago with the Lord's help and what I do is I just walk around and uh, he would give me songs and that's kind of what I started out doing was playing songs that's one of a whole bunch of songs the Lord gave me and it's very short but uh, that's the one I felt like he wanted me to bless you with today so we're going to get into our message get your Bible get your phone get your tablet 
and we're just going to get into the word. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Hey, man, let me get a drink here. So I never forget when I was in that little coffee place and uh, people would show up. <laughs> I wasn't even advertising that, any advertisement that I know of and people would just start coming in. It was amazing, you know, and uh, uh, what was interesting is uh, one of the first times I ministered, uh, I was teaching on uh, Jesus being in the boat. And right before I taught, I, I, the word spoke to me and enlightened me. And I was amazed. I was like, oh, my goodness. You know, I wasn't used to that. You know, now he speaks to me all the time. Got my dog Odie here with me. Hey, Odie. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because when a word speaks to you, it gets you excited. Praise the Lord. And, and he's spoken to me about some specific things today I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to emphasize a certain part of this, and we're going to get into it. You know, the message is, you'll see it's kind of going different directions, but it's got some specific emphasis that the Lord wants me to share today. So let's get into that. So we're going to be talking about three. <laughs> Amen. The number three. And the three through scriptures is what we're going to be talking about. And it's interesting, you know, the first three that we see, of course, right, are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You don't think about that today. You know, the Father, that's three, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We were talking about the prayer for Catholics and how you, you pray the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You know, the Catholics pray that. Well, let's look at that. In Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. No, he's, he's talking about the Trinity, isn't he? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, all over all earth, and over all the creeping things that creep on the earth. But notice, though, he says, let us make man in our image. Powerful to think about, right? You know, when you think about the God the Father and God the Son, they're, they're co-equal, but they're the same in nature. Now, we have lots of people dispute about the, uh, the uh, Trinity and their view of the Trinity. But if you study it, you'll find out there's Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're same in nature, but they're three. Powerful to think about. Listen, you can see that here in Matthew, the third chapter, the 16th verse. Matthew 3, 16 says, And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. Behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I like that. You know, it's easy to please the Father, just be about his business, right? And Jesus was about the Father's business, wasn't he? You know, it's easy to please him, just to be about his business in the earth. He's called us to all purposes, and he's the purpose giver, and he wants you to be about his business, praise the Lord. But notice we can see God listening from Jesus there well please so we see three there praise the lord three in the trinity of course we see three in different areas of the bible too before the flood we see three great patriarchs let's there in genesis the fourth chapter the second verse it says then she bore again in time uh, his brother abel now abel was a keeper of sheep but cain was a tiller of the ground so we see that uh, abel was there and that uh, we see here, as we go on down, we'll see here that uh, Enoch, right, in Genesis 4, 17, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and born Enoch, right? And then Genesis 6, 8 says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Three great patriarchs. Think about that. Before the flood, powerful to think about. Then after the flood, we got three more patriarchs. Another number three. <laughs> God likes to work in threes, doesn't he? Now, I may not go all the, over all the threes because I'm going somewhere with this, but the Second Timothy, or Second Kings 13.33 says, but the Lord was gracious to them and, and had compassion on them and regarded them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow. What a focus on three patriarchs there and would not yet betray them or cast them from his presence. And then, of course, we see that he focuses on three kings, right? The first Samuel 16, 13 says, And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed in the midst of the brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon who? David. Boy, we could talk all about David, couldn't we? Wow. But we're talking about a resurrection 
on resurrection day, we're talking about Jesus today. We're getting there. But think about that today. He threes are a big deal to him, right? And the threes represent some things in the Bible. You know, if you look up, think about that today, complete, and it's good. Well, you know, let's look here at these three kings, like we said, David and 17. The people weren't so excited about Saul, but they wanted a king, so God gave him a king. <laughs> so when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, there he is, a man of whom I spoke to you, the one shall reign over my people. And then, of course, Solomon comes along. So we have a th focus on three kings here. First King uh, 130, it says, uh, Just as I swore to the Lord God of Israel, saying, As surely Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. So I certainly will do this day. So you got the three kings there that we're looking at. And then, of course, we have Jonah. I'm not doing these all in perfect order, but we're talking about three today. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Think about it. He takes off. He doesn't want to do what God's called him to do. Maybe some of you listening today, you're in that situation. You take off <coughs> and you don't want to do what God's asking you to do. You know, he says, Hey, I want you to minister to people and I want you to reach thousands of people. Yeah, you know, oh, I don't know about that. You jump in the car and <laughs> take off to Mexico or Canada or somewhere where you're at far away. You don't know, oh, no, running from the Lord, you know. Think about that. And Jonah's like, man, I'm out of here. Causes all kinds of issues. The Lord brings him back three days and three nights. Perfect completion to get him right back where he needed to be. Think about that today. Perfect and complete. It's all good, isn't it? And God wants you to have a perfect and complete life, right? And he wants to resurrect your circumstances and bring it to a good place. Jonah 1.17 says it like this, Jonah's prayer and deliverance. Now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I like that. Powerful to think about. Man, you think about being down in the deep of the sea for three days and three nights. Think about that today, you know, and maybe you're in a dark situation and a challenging situation. Your faith's been challenged on every area. But God's going to resurrect it and bring it out. When one of those three days and three nights were up, he's, he's where he needs to be. Think about that today. You know, and he can resurrect your circumstances, whatever you're going through, and you think, oh, this is impossible. I'm sure Jonah could have thought he's just digested. Nothing else is going to happen. <laughs> but God can resurrect your circumstances. Praise the Lord. Here we also see these three Hebrew men who are not bowed in Nebuchadnezzar, his images. Let's look here real quick, his image. I'm sorry. Daniel 3.23 says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. You know, before the resurrection, it's a dark time. <laughs> you know, they get thrown into the furnace. You know, Jesus, when he's going to the cross, it's a dark time, you know. And maybe today he's about to resurrect some circumstances. Maybe you're in a dark time. Right now, it seems dark. Remember, Jesus, even on the cross, said, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? It just seems no one hears me. No one knows what I'm going through. Mm. Powerful. You can get emotional thinking about it. Have you ever been there? No one seems to hear you. No one knows what you're going through, but God wants to resurrect you. He wants to make things better for you. If you just hold on, it's coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. Three days. Some things can change, you know, and God's, he's working behind the scenes, isn't he? He's always working behind the scenes. You think, well, he's not, he didn't see me. He has no idea what's going on with me. You know, he picked you and he knew that you're going to mess up before you ever did. He picked you, knew you were going to go, how you were going to come through the challenges you're going through. He, he knew what you're going to go through before you ever got there. Think about that today, but he still picked you because he loves you. He knew you could handle it. He, he figured you had the right stuff, praise the Lord. And, and you've got his spirit in there, and he'll bring you through. He's a good father. Amen. Think about that today. So when Daniel, the third chapter, 26 verses, and then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, come out and come here. 
and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. You know, he he's turning it up. <laughs> he said, turn it up. Let's get this as hot as we can get it. You know, the devil likes to do that in your circumstances. He's like, well, let's turn it up. Let's get it as hot as we can get it. Let's, well, let's turn up the circumstances. And maybe today he's turning it up in your circumstances. And he's trying to get you to cave in, get you to quit. Thinking, well, he'll cave in, he'll cave, he'll quit. But you know, you still have a resurrection power living on the inside of you to bring in, you through that circumstance. You've got grace. These men, the fire didn't even hurt them. Think about that today. You know, God's grace can protect you, His power can protect you, and He can also resurrect the circumstances for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, so God wanted them. Not to be burned. He wanted to keep safe, and he wants to keep you safe. He wants you to come out not even smelling like smoke and whatever circumstance you're going through today, but you have to trust him. Even in that dark time, you have to trust him because he, he is working behind the scenes. He's a good father. Praise the Lord. Peter, Matthew, the 26th verse and 34th verse. Notice what Jesus said to Peter. Jesus, uh, he said unto him, Verily I say unto thee that this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. Think about that. Three times. And you say, well, why are you talking about these things? Well, the Holy Spirit is emphasizing this particular thing. You know, maybe today you failed God three times or more, you know. But God, you don't think before he, he picked Peter as part of the 12 disciples. You don't think he knew that before he picked Peter? And you don't think he knew that before he picked you, that you would mess up and you'd have challenges and you would struggle in certain circumstances, but he still picked you because he's a good, good father. Think about that today, you know. It was a dark hour for Peter. You know, Peter, he messed up. I mean, he kicked himself once for denying him the first time, but then he did it again. Could have kicked himself again real good. <laughs> Bang his head against the window, you know, or the wall or get upset, pull his hair out. He's, he's failed. Him. You know, this is a, a person that didn't want to fail him. He told him he wasn't going to fail him. He, he was a bold person and he, he didn't mind sticking up for God. But when it came down to certain circumstances that he was weak in, then he didn't do as good as he'd like to perform. You know, think about that today. You know, maybe today you may have been great and doing great things for the Lord and your heart is to do some great things for God. But, you know, then you messed up once here. They messed up again here, there, and over here. You messed up again. And, oh, man, you think Peter could have said, no, I am not doing I'm not serving God no more. I'm, I don't want to do anything for God anymore. This is just tough. I didn't know we were going to go this far. <laughs> but, you know, God knew that Peter was going to do that. And Peter, he ended up ministering to thousands after he was the day of Pentecost, you think about that today. Hey, you know, you can have some challenges and you may get off track here and there, but God will still use you. You don't have to be perfect. Hey man, you're not ever going to be perfect. You're all, we're all growing. We're all growing spiritually. Praise the Lord. And if somebody tells you they're perfect, you know, they definitely aren't, <laughs> but you know, God will get you back on track. And he'll help you to minister to thousands if you'll let him help you get back on track. He's a good father. And he shows that with Peter's life with that three, right? He shows it even though he denied him three times. He says, I'll, I'll still help you, Peter. I'll still get you back on track, Peter. You remember he comes up to him by the side of the lake. And Jesus said, he said, feed my sheep, Peter. If you love me, you'll feed my sheep. He could have said, no, you're, you're out, Peter. You're gone. I've had enough of you, Peter. You've, you've already messed up. And. You keep you keep messing all this stuff up. You know it's embarrassing, Peter. <laughs> you know he could have said that, but no, he didn't. He pulled up some fish and had some Long John Silvers there with him on the side of the lake. And he he said to him, over a hush puppy and some fish, he said to him, Peter. He, he said, if you love me, go feed the sheep. He, he wanted me about his business. He wanted me to go out again, didn't he? Peter had already gave up on himself. He's out there fishing on the water. <laughs> he's like no i'm going back to my old job this just this is easier you know and, and sometimes your old job may seem easier but god will give you the grace and whatever you're going through whatever challenge you're facing today peter's out there and he's fishing on the lake and he's like man you know and he he's like this yeah yeah you know and he's, he's like I'll, I'll just go back to business for myself but god wanted him about 
his business, right? And some of you need to get back out in God's business, right? Getting, getting together, doing God's business. There's a hurting and dying world out there. And he's wanting to get as many people saved because he's coming soon, praise the Lord, right? Hey, man, he's coming. Did you hear me? I said he's coming. And it's important that you're doing what about the master's business, praise the Lord. So Peter got back up, Mr. Thousands for the Lord. Well, who, who all would you reach if you got back up and you quit quitting on yourself so much? Huh? How many people would you reach if you'd get back up and minister to more and get and be on fire like you first started? That's why we're doing the service like we're doing it today. It reminded me of when I first started powerful stuff, you know, but the fire, where's the fire? You know, are you going to go out there and minister to as many people as you can to reach them for Jesus? What's most important to you today, you know, being about God's business or about doing it and making everybody happy all the way around you, you know? Yeah, we should, we have to be smart and we have to make good decisions for all the people around us. You know, we have responsibilities, but the core to your, your heart should be to do the things God's put on your heart and fulfill them with the purpose that he has for your life. Praise the Lord. We have to get up again, right? Yeah. Some of you, you know, you need to get up again and face this situation again, get up again, right? Don't cave in and quit. I remember listening to one time TD Jakes was talking about, you know, it was a great message. And he was talking about how he couldn't even get up and put his pants on if it wasn't for the Lord, you know? He'd been through so much that he, he needed God just to help him put his pants on in the morning. And you think about that today, maybe you're in that circumstance and you need him just to help you to have the grace to get up another day to fight. But it is a fight, You've got to get up and you have to fight, praise the Lord. But you have all the weapons. God's given you everything you need. He's given you, you know, He's giving you the greater one on the inside. So you're not all alone and he never leaves you, never forsakes you. Amen. He wants you. Hey, praise the Lord. The sixth thing, when we're talking about three, Jesus said he would rise again the third in three days. And th the third day, John 2, 19 says it like this. this Jesus answered, said to them, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. Wow. Then the Jews said it was, it would take 46 years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? Think about that. You know, their natural mind was like, you, my good, with the tools they had then we're not ever, you're not going to build that temple anytime soon. You know, here where I live, I could put a house together and it seemed like almost overnight, man, we'll have a new business on the corner just overnight. You know, the, the technology we have, the tools that we have, but back then it wasn't like that, you know? And then the 21st verse is, but he was speaking of the temple of his body three days and he'll rise again. Think about that. You know, he prophesied it and it happened. <laughs> Amen. Powerful to think about. Mark 10, 33 says it like this. And behold, we were going up to Jerusalem and the son of man will betray to the chief priests and to the scribes and we be betrayed to them and they will be condemned him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And then on the third day, he, what's going to happen? Will rise again. And that's exactly what he did. He walked out of that temp, that tomb right? And the angel knocked over that, that, that door, that entrance, and he comes walking down and he says, I, I, because I live, you can live also. <laughs> Powerful to think about. He wants you to live also. He don't want you just to live a mundane, not good life. No, a mundane life. He wants you to have a good life, right? He said, I came to give you a life, a good life with this resurrected savior's power touching you right there where you're at. Praise the Lord. And you say, well, I, I can't believe that Jeremiah, you don't know about my life. Well, it doesn't matter what I think or what you think it has to do with what the Bible says. Right. And the Bible says that he came to give you life and he came to give it to you more abundantly. That's just not average life. If you look those words up in the Greek, you'll find out that's life to the full. That's excessive is what it means. He wants you to have an excessively good life here on earth. Why would he tell you that in the gospel? Why? Because he could have told you, well, when you get to heaven, you'll have an excessive life, right? And when you get to heaven, it's going to be great. You'll like that. You'll, well, we get to heaven, we have your mansion, which he's preparing for you right now. You know, yeah, things are going to be good. You don't, but he said here, he wants you to have a life 
and it more above him. He cares about here, doesn't he? He cares about where you're at, right there where you're at, doesn't he? He cares about you having an excessively good life. And after rising again and showing them his scars, Luke 24, 46 says it like this. He says, and he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it is, was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He walks in there, shows them the scars, rose again the third day. Wow, powerful to think about. Amen. Your circumstances are going to rise. They're going to change. Amen. This is nothing new. No, it's nothing new. God, God has no problem resurrecting your circumstances, just like he raised himself from the dead. This is nothing new. He, he wants to do that for you. He's a God of the breakthrough, right? He, he gave himself a breakthrough, didn't he? When challenges he was facing and going through the challenges he was going through, he gave him his own self a breakthrough and resurrected himself. Powerful to think about. And maybe today you think, well, I just don't know. I don't know if I can come through this. This is a challenge, and I'm challenged on every side. Well, you know, he's the God of the breakthrough. He's the God of the resurrection power. He can change it again for you. If you still believe that he's still that same Jesus that he was in the Gospels, which he is today, you know, he's even praying for you right now. The Scripture says he's praying for you. How could you go wrong if you got the greater one inside of you, and he's praying for you? Amen. He didn't, when he prays, he gets answers, doesn't he? He's praying for you. He may be praying through other people for you, but he's praying for you right now. Amen. He's sitting up there praying for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. All that he prayed for you. He, amen. You know, he remember he told Simon that he said, I prayed to you, I pray for you that your faith fail thee not. Wow. Amen. He's praying for us. The faith fail us not. He, he cares about people. And he loves people, and he wants you to succeed in every area of your life. It's all summed up in John 4, 19. It says, in, it says here in the 19th verse, it says, A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. Think about that today. If he hadn't been raised from the dead, you know, then you wouldn't live also, but he was raised from the dead, so you can live also. You say, well, what's that mean? Well, you can have a life of abundance also, you know, your abundance of joy, a life of peace that passes all understanding. Joy in the midst of circumstances when you don't, you can, most people wouldn't have joy, but you have joy and you can tap because of the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You have everything you need on the inside of you because he was, resur he was resurrected that third day praise the lord as he was resurrected he's also to, to you live a lot you're supposed to live a life worth living he wants you to have a life worth living he doesn't want you to have some mundane life you know and go to church and it's just some dead service no you need to get around others that are excited about jesus get around people that are pumped up about jesus there's still people today that are pumped up about jesus he's called his adventures of faith well you know he wants you to have an adventure of faith with his resurrected power helping you just trust him and let him do that in your life praise the lord before we go on, we're going to do a communion service. You might want to go get you something to drink or some kind of bread or get you a cracker or some juice. You can do that while I'm finishing off this last part here. But uh, And we're going to after we get done here. But because he was resurrected, he was able to, to live a life worth living for you. You're able to live a life worth living. But he, uh, there's something interesting. There was, There's seven raptures in the Bible, right, all the way up to the thousand-year reign. And what's interesting, you know, is – what number his rapture is. Let's look at this real quick. Enoch says in Genesis, or Enoch was in Genesis 5, 23. It says, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God. And he was not for God took him. You know, he's just walking and God just took him. <laughs> That's the first resurrection. Elijah here in the second Kings, the second chapter 11 verses says, then it happened and they continued on and taught. And suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated them, two of them, and Elijah went up by the whirlwind into heaven. That's the second rapture, right? What's Which one is Jesus's? And we're talking about three. He was number three, wasn't he? Powerful to think about. 
Mark 16, 19 says it like this. It says, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Right? What do we say about three? Well, we 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 said that the three represented, it means complete and it means good. Right? And he, he did everything complete and good for you. Think about that, you know. You know, the Bible says when you find a wife, you find a good thing. Amen, you know. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, when you find Jesus, he's everything complete and he's everything good that you need to have in your life. Praise the Lord. He's complete and he's good. Amen. And he's good for you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray with you. And uh, we're going to pray for salvation and we're going to pray for people to be right with the, with the Lord before we go on. Because I, I don't want you to take communion unworthily. I want you to be in right standing with the Father when we do take communion. But uh, let's go ahead and pray for you so that you can take communion with me, celebrating this Resurrection Day today. Let's pray, first of all, for those people that aren't right with the Lord today. Maybe you want to be right. Maybe you're like Peter. and You want to be right. You want to get on about the Master's business. you got a purpose to fulfill, and you, you want to do it with God's help. Well, let's get you right with the Father right now. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for you. Father, we just ask you to touch these people that are listening. And Father, we just ask that you help them to be right with you, Father. Help them to be encouraged. Help them to be refreshed. Father, and help them, Lord, to fulfill your purpose in their life for you, Father. Father, we just ask they recommit their lives today, Father. And you say this with me. I recommit my life to you, Jesus, right now. I confess what you said about my sins. They're forgiven. I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness right now. In Jesus' name, and I rededicate my life to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, if you pray that prayer, you are right with the Father right now. You need to be about the Master's business today. So start looking where you can go that the Holy Spirit's leading you to. If that's this podcast every Wednesday and Sunday, or if you have some church that you're supposed to be at and you're supposed to be helping them, Hey, you get right and do what God's called you, you to do, and you fulfill the mission and purpose he has for your life. Praise the Lord. Don't settle for anything less than God's best. Amen. If you don't know Jesus right now, I'm not going to pray the communion prayer for you know Jesus. You know, when we were doing the communion, we're basically we're just remembering him. That's all we're doing. We're remembering him, and you know, and you're going to remember him as your Savior today. As we pray this prayer, just pray it with me. I want to pray out of Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse, if you'd like to know Jesus today. Say, Father, I believe you've risen Jesus from the dead. And Father, I confess you and Jesus as Lord of my life right now. Jesus be Lord of my life right now. I dedicate my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer right there, you are saved. Amen. He's the captain of your salvation today, praise the Lord. And you need to start following him in everything that you do. Start reading your Bible. I say start reading your the Gospels first, the first four uh, Gospels, the New Testament. Kind of get yourself familiar with those. And as you get to know the character of the Father, you know, and you get to know him, you want to know him. Get to know him, praise the Lord. You're going to enjoy this walk with Jeremiah S. Ministries at Yahoo.com. Me and my wife, that's the one that's the most exciting thing that we do here is get to see people get saved. And if you want to, you can put it in the comments. I'd love to see it in the comments. We love you. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the communion here today. Get your get your wafer, <laughs> get your cracker, get your juice, and we're gonna spend a little time together doing communion. Amen. I'll give you just a couple of minutes to do that. Praise the Lord. Get my community together here. Amen. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Maybe I didn't wait two minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and start. And uh, you can just join in where there, praise the Lord. First Corinthians 11 chapters, where we're going to do our communion out of the 23rd through 25th verses there. It says, for I received from the Lord himself. You can pause me, by the way, if you need to, if you're replaying this and 
and uh, get your communion there. For I received from the Lord himself that which I passed on to you. It was given to me personally. But the Lord Jesus on the night when he was uh, treacherously delivered up and while he was betrayed was in progress, took bread. Let's take the bread here. And when he had given thanks, he break it. Thank you, Father, for your body. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for by your stripes. We are healed. Praise the Lord. He break it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Do this to call me affectionately to remembrance. A peace was upon you and a chance of a peace was upon you. By your stripes, we were healed. Thank you for your healing. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, this is that we are healed and we just thank you for us being healed at the cross father we thank you for your body being broken at the cross the bible says you are more more than any man and father we just thank you for that today thank you for being good to us in jesus name we love you father and we partake of the bread partake of the bread thank you father thank you for the bread thank you for your body Oh, we thank you for your healing power. Thank you. I'm feeling good today, Father. We just the cup. Get your cup there. This could be juice. It could be water. Whatever. It's not really what it is. It's what it represents is his blood. You, you could have a big bag of bread, or you could have just some juice, whatever you have there. You know, we're just doing this in remembrance of Jesus. It said, similarly, when the supper was ended, he took the cup also, saying, The cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. That's a deep statement, right? When he says in his blood, he's saying that he made the, the new covenant. New, te new Testament means new covenant is what it means. And he made a new covenant for you, a much better covenant than the old covenant. And a new contract is the way you would put it. There, right? And we have lots of things as an inheritance because of what was it? His blood. You know, if a person dies, they leave an inheritance, you know. And, you know, Jesus left us a wonderful, wonderful inheritance for you today. And we just talked about his body, his healing power, but he left everything you need. That's a good, good Savior to the Lord. Amen. Ratified, established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to call me affectionately to remembrance. Let's remember him with the blood today. Let's pray for it first. Father, we just thank you for your blood. We thank you, Father, for Jesus' blood. We thank you for shedding it on the cross. Father, we just thank you, Father, for him taking the whippings and the beating of the cross. His blood was shed for us. Father, we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And we give you the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Father, for him ratifying it in his blood, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just drink the juice there. Let's thank him. We just thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We were drawn to remembrance what your son Jesus did for us. We thank you, Jesus, for being so good to us. We praise you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this service. I know it was a little bit unique. Hope it sounded good. Praise the Lord. And sorry if I got a little emotional there. It took me back to a time that I, I hadn't really recalled like I had when I was in the middle of it there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, God is good, and he's good all the time, and he loves you. Enjoy this Resurrection Day. Remember what Jesus has done for you. We love you. God bless you. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day.